Hi, I'm Dr. Edith Bracho Sanchez. I am a pediatrician and a new mama, and I talk with other parents every day about their kids' vaccines. Parents sometimes have questions about the vaccine schedule. Why is this shot recommended now? Does it have to be at that time? Could we spread the shots out? Do we really need this vaccine? Well, let's talk about that. In this video, I'll focus on the vaccines kids get before age five or six when they start kindergarten. The thing to keep in mind is all these vaccines are recommended at specific ages for two reasons. One, when the vaccine will work the best with your child's immune system, and two, when your child needs the protection the most. Let me explain how that plays out. I'll use measles as an example. We know babies get some antibodies for measles from their mothers during pregnancy, as long as their mom had been vaccinated against measles. But this gift from mom starts to wear off around 12 months of age. That means the perfect window of opportunity for the measles vaccine is soon after they turn one. Before then, mom's antibodies actually mean the vaccine won't work as well. But if you wait, you're leaving your child vulnerable to measles, which is most dangerous to young children. So giving the vaccine when kids are one to one and a half is really the sweet spot. Your toddler's immune system is ready and they need the protection the vaccine will help them develop. And you can be reassured by all the research that shows the vaccine is incredibly effective when given at these ages. We have the data to back that up. The vaccine we use to protect against measles also protects against mumps and rubella. This vaccine is called MMR. Your child will get a second dose starting at age four. The second dose acts like a reminder for your child's immune system. This is just one vaccine that is recommended for kids. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the American Academy of Pediatrics and other medical groups have all agreed on a schedule for immunizations for kids. It's my job as a pediatrician to keep track of my patients' vaccines so they are protected at the right time. Most of these vaccines are recommended in your baby's first year and a half for those two reasons I shared earlier. Children's immune systems work really well with vaccines at these ages so we can help our children develop lifelong immunity. And because without the protection of vaccines, young children would be vulnerable to some really serious diseases. So let's go through the rest of the schedule, starting with the first vaccine most babies get, hepatitis B. This is a vaccine your baby gets right at birth, within 24 hours of being born. Your baby will get two more doses after that, at one or two months, and between six and 18 months. You may ask, why do we give the first dose so quickly? Well, it really comes down to risk. Hepatitis B is caused by a virus, and more than one million people in the United States have long-term hepatitis B infections. That includes some moms and dads who may not even know they're infected, as well as other people who may come in contact with your child, like caregivers or relatives. And if you are infected with hepatitis B as a baby, there's a 90% chance you will develop serious chronic conditions like liver cancer in your lifetime. I certainly don't want any child to face that destiny so early in life, and the vaccine is a safe and effective way to eliminate that risk. Starting at age two months, your baby will also get vaccines for diphtheria, tetanus, and acellular pertussis, haemophilus influenza type B or Hib, polio, pneumococcal disease, and rotavirus. Let's take those one at a time. Diphtheria, tetanus, and acellular pertussis are given in a vaccine called DTAP or DTAP. Children get several doses of this vaccine and then as an adult, they also need a booster of a different version of this vaccine called Tdap every 10 years or so. The CDC also recommends that pregnant women get a Tdap vaccine during every pregnancy because they can pass some of these antibodies onto their babies to protect them right after birth. By two months though, that protection from mom has gone, so the vaccine is important for your baby to develop their own immunity. Here's what your child will be protected against through this vaccine. Diphtheria. This used to be pretty deadly, killing one out of every five kids who got it. You definitely want to protect your baby from this serious throat infection that can also cause breathing problems and heart failure. Tetanus. That's a deadly bacterium that lives in the soil. It's in the earth, everywhere, and yes, it can get into your body from a rusty nail, but really any kind of cut on your skin. 
if the bacteria gets in, it produces a deadly toxin that causes muscle paralysis. We all want our kids to be able to safely explore the world. There's no way to get this protection other than the vaccine. Pertussis. Pertussis is also known as whooping cough. This is a big one. The first shot at around two months comes not a moment too soon, but babies are not fully protected until they get all five doses of this vaccine. We also recommend a booster dose around age 11. Babies who get whooping cough suffer really violent coffin fits, which makes it hard for them to breathe. They can end up in the hospital and even die. Tragically, it's often an adult loved one who gives it to a baby, sometimes not realizing their own chronic cough was pertussis. I politely asked my relatives to get the Tdap vaccine in order to meet my baby. This has kept him safe while he gets big enough to have all five doses. Next, Haemophilus influenza type B or Hib. Hib infections cause a variety of illnesses, from ear infections to pneumonia and meningitis. It can be life-threatening. And if your baby shows symptoms of these illnesses without a record of being vaccinated, doctors may need to do a spinal tap to test for the bacteria. Getting the vaccine protects your baby and is also a good way to avoid invasive procedures. Your child will get four doses to be fully protected. Polio. Polio was a plague that many of our grandparents still remember. It was a disease that caused death and paralysis, and parents were terrified of it at the beginning of the 20th century, until the vaccine was developed in the 1950s. Polio still exists in the world and could easily come back to our communities, which is why we strongly recommend vaccination. Your child will get four doses before starting school. Pneumococcal vaccine. This one was another great victory for children's health. Pneumococcal disease is caused by a bacteria called Streptococcus pneumoniae. When these bacteria invade the lungs, they cause pneumonia. When they invade the bloodstream, they can cause sepsis. When they invade the brain, they cause meningitis. They can also cause ear infections, which most parents know can be painful and frequent. Since we have had this vaccine, the number of kids suffering all of these illnesses has dropped dramatically. You need four doses of pneumococcal vaccine. Next, rotavirus. Rotavirus was the main cause of diarrhea in children in the U.S. before the vaccine was developed and introduced in 2006, and it remains an important cause of diarrhea in certain parts of the world. It causes severe watery diarrhea, vomiting, fever, and abdominal pain, and kids can become so dehydrated they need to be hospitalized. This virus spreads really, really easily on your hands, dirty diapers or toys, and also through the air. You simply cannot wash your hands enough to keep this virus away from your baby, so you need the vaccine. Your baby will get either two or three doses of this vaccine at ages two, four, and six months. When your baby reaches six months, you can also protect them against influenza. The first time your child gets the flu vaccine, they will also need a second dose four weeks later. Influenza is a tricky virus, and even healthy kids can develop severe complications that send them to the hospital. The vaccine is really good at preventing that severe disease, which is why we recommend everyone get it every year starting at age six months. At 12 months, your baby can be protected against two more diseases. The first one is varicella, or chickenpox. Before we had this vaccine in the US, about four million people got chickenpox every year. More than 10,000 were hospitalized and more than 100 died. Even a mild case can cause a child to miss school for a week or longer. After the first dose at age one, your child will need a second dose between ages four and six. Also at 12 months, your child will get their first dose of hepatitis A vaccine. Hepatitis A is a serious liver disease which can spread through food or by contact with an infected person, even someone who doesn't show any symptoms. The vaccine is a safe and effective way to give your child lifelong protection. They'll get a second dose six months later. This is a lot to keep track of, I know. So to wrap up, here's what I want you to keep in mind. One. Vaccines work like a partner with your child's immune system. They teach the immune system how to recognize a virus or bacteria so that your child can develop their own immunity. Two, of all the age groups, 
Babies are hospitalized and die more often from the diseases we can prevent with vaccines. We want to vaccinate them as soon as possible. Three, vaccines keep kids from needing invasive medical procedures or hospitalization. It's the best strategy to avoid extra medical treatments. And four, we know from decades of research and following millions of children that the vaccines work best at these ages and with the space in between doses. And we know they are safe when given on this schedule. Finally, if you have questions, talk with your pediatrician. We are here to partner with you to help your child stay healthy and thrive.